Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is my 2000 BMW 328i, and today I'll be showing you how to refresh the cooling system. If you recently bought a used E46, or if it's been 50,000 miles since the last time you replaced any of the cooling system parts, then it's highly recommended that you follow this procedure. The E46 is notorious for cooling system problems that can leave you stranded or even destroy the engine if you're not careful. But all of this can be avoided with the preventative maintenance I'm about to go over. If your car is an automatic with a mechanical fan instead of an electric fan, there are a few extra steps that won't be included in this video, but I've put a link in the description to help you with that part. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Breaker bar. Torque wrench with 3 8 drive. Torque wrench with quarter inch drive. Socket wrench with 3 8 drive. Large flathead screwdriver medium flathead screwdriver, socket extension with 3 8 drive, socket extension with quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, T50 torque socket, T25 torx bit, another 10 millimeter socket to fit the smaller torque wrench, socket drive adapter, tiny flathead screwdriver, pliers, electric screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, plastic prying tool, padded gloves, magnetic bowl, plastic bowl, WD-40, silicone grease, floor jack and jack stands, and a fluid drain pan. For this job, I also needed to purchase one gallon of BMW coolant, one gallon of distilled water, upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose, expansion tank, expansion tank cap, water pump, thermostat, thermostat bolts, accessory serpentine belt, air conditioner serpentine belt, auxiliary fan switch, and a coolant level sensor. Before starting this job, make sure the engine is cold and the car is parked on flat ground. The first thing to do is put the front of the car on jack stands and remove the plastic belly pan with a Phillips screwdriver. Then lower the car back onto the ground. This part of the air intake is held on with four plastic pins that can be pulled out with a regular pair of pliers. Each pin is made of two pieces, so make sure to get all of them. All four of these came out in one piece this time. Squeeze the sides of the intake where it connects to the airbox. It should just pop out. The airbox is held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. Make sure to remove this rubber wiring housing that's hooked onto the back of the airbox. Undo the two clips connecting the MAF sensor and pull the airbox out. Remove this plastic pin from the auxiliary fan with a plastic pry tool or carefully use a pair of dikes to pull it out. This pin came out in two pieces, so make sure to get both of them. The other side of the fan is held in with a metal screw that can be removed with a T25 Torx bit. Squeeze to remove the two electrical connections on the fan. Also unplug the camshaft position sensor and tuck all of these wires out of the way. The fan should now easily slide out. Pull it straight up. Now we have access to the belts. Use a small flathead screwdriver to pry off the plastic cap on this tensioner pulley. Insert the T50 torque socket into the front of the pulley and turn it clockwise with a breaker bar to remove tension on the belt so it can be removed. You'll see later that I shouldn't have removed the main belt yet, so skip this step for now. Whenever the belts are off, it's a good idea to check all the pulleys to make sure they're spinning smoothly and quietly. 
you should inspect or replace any pulleys or accessories that are loose or sound rough. Put the fluid drain pan under the expansion tank and remove the tank cap. Use the tiny flathead screwdriver to lift the clips on the upper radiator hose so you can remove it from the tank. Do the same with the other end of the hose. Now do the same to remove this hose connecting the expansion tank to the heater core. This will release some coolant. Lift up on the tank to dismount it and tilt it to get better access to the bottom. Remove the coolant level sensor by twisting it clockwise 90 degrees before pulling it out. I had trouble getting the bottom hose off, so I used a flathead screwdriver to gently pry it off. Now the expansion tank can be removed. I'm going to reuse this piece connected to the bottom of the tank. It is part of the expansion tank mount. To remove it, this little handle needs to be pulled outward, then I'll use a flathead screwdriver again to gently pry it off. I'll probably consider replacing this piece the next time I install a new expansion tank. Remove the coolant level sensor and position the drain pan under the lower radiator hose. Unplug the coolant temperature sensor and tuck the connector out of the way. Squeeze the sensor on both sides, then pull it out of the hose. This will release more coolant. Unclip the lower radiator hose and pull it off of the radiator. Funny story, my lower radiator hose was stuck and I fought with it for more than half an hour not including brakes. I tried everything from soaking it with WD-40, to removing the other end first for more leverage, to blessing it with some burning sage. In the end, I finally got it off by using a large flathead screwdriver to pry it off. Oh, yeah. This was pretty nerve-wracking because I was afraid of cracking the plastic radiator. Remove the thermostat electrical connection by depressing the metal wire before pulling. The thermostat housing is held on by one 13mm bolt and three 10mm bolts. With all four bolts removed, the thermostat housing should easily slide out. Here I had to reinstall the main belt in order to loosen the bolts on the water pump pulley. This is why I said not to remove the main belt earlier. There are four 10mm bolts securing the water pump pulley. With the bolts loosened, the main belt can now be removed the same way as the first belt by using the T50 Torx socket and a breaker bar. Completely remove the four bolts and set the water pump pulley aside. There are four more 10mm bolts securing the water pump to the engine. The water pump has a pretty tight seal, so you might need to wiggle it or gently use a plastic mallet to break it free. This will release the last of the coolant. Now we're ready to start reinstalling parts, so go ahead and wipe off the pulleys and any mating surfaces. Mm -hmm. 
I couldn't get the new water pump in until I put some silicone grease on the o-ring. The pump I removed had this ridge on the top, so that's the way I'm going to install the new one. But honestly, I don't see a reason why the orientation matters. Once the water pump pops into place, you can reinstall the four 10mm nuts. These nuts should be torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds. Next, install the new thermostat housing as shown. The three 10mm bolts should be torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds, and the 13mm bolt should be torqued to 16.2 foot-pounds. Plug in the electrical connection to the thermostat. Reattach the water pump pulley with the four 10mm bolts and torque them to 7.4 foot-pounds. I used some more silicone grease to make it easier to install the radiator hoses. Also, maybe they won't be so hard to get off next time. Make sure the hose connections are on fully and close the wire clip. If the hoses aren't pushed on all the way, they will leak. The coolant temp sensor only fits one way, so look at it closely, then reattach its electrical connection. Prep the upper radiator hose with more silicone grease and pop open the clips. Then prep the expansion tank connections and install the old mounting piece, or a new one if you have it. I'm also reusing this metal clip from the old tank. Look closely and double check that everything is fully seated. The coolant level sensor only fits one way. Insert the sensor and turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Attach the electrical connection and the bottom hose while it's easy to get to. Then slide the expansion tank straight down into its mount against the radiator. Reattach the heater core hose onto the new tank. Install the new upper radiator hose and push the metal clips down to secure it in place. The main belt can be a little tricky to install. Here's a diagram I found that should help. I like to wrap the belt around all the pulleys except for the alternator pulley then compress the tensioner pulley and fully seat the belt.
route the air conditioner belt around the crankshaft pulley and over the tensioner pulley. Compress the tensioner pulley and seat the belt around the air conditioner pulley. Make sure to double check that the belts are centered on each pulley. Then reinstall the dust caps on the tensioner pulleys. Now the fan can slide back into place, but first take a look at the retaining clips that it needs to slide into at the bottom of the radiator. The edge of the fan should just barely fit between the expansion tank and the radiator. Make sure the bottom of the fan is seated securely. Reinstall the big plastic pin into the corner of the fan next to the expansion tank. Then reinstall the screw in the opposite corner with the T25 Torx bit. Reconnect the two electrical connections on the fan and one on the camshaft sensor. The bottom of the airbox has a finger pointing down that needs to fit into this hole. Insert the MAF housing as you slide the airbox into place and secure the MAF with its two metal clips. Don't forget to reattach the rubber wiring housing to the hook on the back of the airbox. With the airbox fully seated, reinstall its two 10mm bolts. The air intake should easily snap right back into the airbox. Then secure it down with the four plastic pins. Now it's time to refill the system with coolant following these steps. Remove the expansion tank cap and bleed screw. Turn the ignition to on so that the fan works, but do not start the engine. Turn the heater all the way up and the fan to the lowest setting. Slowly pour coolant into the expansion tank until it starts spilling out the bleed screw hole. Keep pouring coolant until bubbles stop coming out of the hole the coolant level may slowly drop. Repeat this step until the coolant level stops dropping. Replace the bleed screw and check the coolant level in the expansion tank. The float has two marks on the end. The upper mark should float above the fill hole. Replace the expansion tank cap and start the engine. Let the engine idle until the temperature gauge reads normal. Make sure the engine does not overheat. If it does, shut off the engine and start over from step one. If the temperature stays stable, take the car for a short test drive, but keep your eye on the temperature. Then let the engine cool overnight and check the coolant level again in the morning. Top it off if needed. That concludes this week's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. Please recycle your used automotive fluids! Just keep saying to yourself, endless money pit, endless money pit, endless money pit.